Welcome to the November Ultrasound Case of the Month. Each month I review a case where ultrasound helped take better care of patients. As always, email me with any questions or concerns at gzana.iu.edu. This case was evaluated in the emergency department by Dr. Casey Fry and his attending Dr. Rob Ferry. They were working in the low acuity section when a young female arrived with right lower abdominal pain associated with skin redness. She was evaluated previously at an outside hospital where imaging was performed showing a subcutaneous abscess. She was started on antibiotics yet did not receive incision and drainage. Dr. Fry decided to ultrasound the large indurated area on the lower abdomen to better classify the finding as well as plan for what he thought would be a subsequent incision and drainage. Here's the first image obtained. A large hypochoic area was identified in the area of concern. Given the clinical scenario and imaging study, the patient was diagnosed with a large superficial skin abscess. To assist with identification, the blue shaded area depicts the entire abscess pocket. The mixed echogenicity of the abscess can sometimes confuse novice sonographers, yet this heterogeneous appearance is quite classic for an abscess. Another view in a perpendicular plane to the previous was obtained. In this view, we are actually able to identify an underlying muscle body as well as the fascial plane both anterior and inferior to the muscle body. The muscle is shaded in blue to help with identification. The fascial planes are identifiable as the bright areas that envelope the muscle. If you look closely, you can see subtle air artifact representing the interabdominal cavity and its loops of bowel below the inferior fascial plane. So now that we have clearly identified a large abscess, the next step is easy, right? Let's just numb the patient and perform an incision and drainage. Bread and butter emergency medicine. However, I think we all have struggled to achieve adequate anesthesia in these large abscesses that allow complete and effective drainage. Local infiltration is often difficult given the size and tends to be ineffective. With that in mind, is there a better option for these large abscesses? The treatment team thought so and they offered the patient a nerve block to facilitate the procedure. For those of you less familiar with nerve blocks, a TAP block stands for transverse abdominus plane block. Plane blocks specifically target a fascial plane that serves as a potential space where a specific nerve runs. These have gained popularity especially for smaller nerves because you don't have to locate the actual nerve, just the space in which it runs. The top block specifically targets the cutaneous branch of the intercostal nerve which supplies innervation of the lateral and anterior abdominal wall unilaterally. It reliably obtains anesthesia of the T10 to L1 dermatomal distribution highlighted in blue. Yet there is literature to support anesthesia of the superior dermatomes of T7 to T9 highlighted in orange by additionally targeting the plane just below the inferior costal margin. The tap block is performed with the patient supine using an in-plane approach with the needle visualized in long axis, finding the area in between the inferior costal margin iliac crest in the mid to anterior axillary line should be the target. Here is a diagram from a paper by Dr. Mamad. The picture shows the installation of local anesthetic in the plane overlying the transverse abdominus muscle targeting the cutaneous branch of the intercostal nerve. Given the fact that you are filling a potential space, higher volumes of local anesthetic are required. Literature and experience often cite administering between 20 to 30 cc's. Here is the first part of the nerve block being performed by the treatment team. The echogenicity of the needle and the tissue movement as a result of the needle can be identified starting at the top right of the picture. Relevant anatomy is depicted here with identification of the three muscle bodies, the external oblique, the internal oblique, and the transverse abdominus. This anatomy dictates the location for local anesthetic installation. Here we can see the fascial plane of the abdominal cavity with air artifact from bowel which highlights the importance of knowing where the needle tip is located. Additionally, we can see installation of local anesthetic identified by the expansion of hypochoic fluid deep to the internal oblique muscle and superficial to the transverse abdominus. I marked this area to help with viewer identification. Our final clip shows the needle still within the tissue with the tip of it surrounded by a pocket of hypochoic local anesthetic. The bright artifacts on the superior edge is quite common if small air bubbles are not completely removed from the anesthetic solution before injection. Since these findings can be subtle, I highlighted the hypochaotic area of local anesthetic in green. The internal oblique muscle, which is inferior to the external oblique and superficial to the transverse abdominus, is shaded in orange. While I tried to clearly show anatomy, it might be a good idea to again review the last few anatomy slides if this is a newer concept for you. While this case highlights a tap block, there are numerous plane blocks and nerve blocks which have the potential to make your life easier and your patient's experience better. These plane blocks are quite easy to perform once you identify relevant anatomy, and if you have the skill to perform an ultrasound guided IV, I am confident that you have the procedural skill for this type of block. 
It is important to reiterate that plane blocks require a large volume of local anesthetic because you're using the potential space of the fascial plane to help disseminate the medication because you are not putting a small amount of medication right next to the nerve like a traditional nerve block. Finally, I don't advocate for this or a similar block for a simple small abscess or minor procedure. However, these types of blocks can be an additional tool at your disposal to help take better care of your patients. In emergency medicine, it's helpful to have multiple ways to take care of our patients because unique circumstances often require us to be creative and find the best possible approach to tackle disease process. In the correct situation, I think utilization of this skill leads to better patient-centered outcomes. Thanks for watching and continue using Ultrasound to help take better care of your patients. As always, email me with any questions or concerns.